Hello tout le monde, c'est Enora22, j'espère que vous allez bien. On se retrouve aujourd'hui pour Bacon Pines, un jeu édité par Follow Traveler et développé par Hiding Spot. Installez-vous confortablement sur votre canapé, votre lit, votre chaise de bureau ou sur vos WC, peu importe. Let's go Alors là, on va devoir refaire un choix... Je crois qu'il ne reste que Flight, là. Hein. Luca drew himself up and decided to take the only option they had left. Flight. He squinted down the barrel of the mission control defense cannon, aiming it through an opening in the dense tree branches. He looked up with surprise as it struck true and taut. Luca and Iggy winced as they sprinted through the thicket. The branches clawed at them, reluctant to give passage. After what felt like a marathon, Luca stopped in his tracks as they reached the clearing. What the? That was all he was able to say before Iggy slammed into his back. The boys tumbled down a steep decline and crashed with a wheezing thud on a surface as hard as ice. In fact, it was ice. Chapter 5 Signs They stood silently, catching their breath. The sky was like sapphire. With each breath, a plume of steam escaped from Luca's lungs. Let's keep moving. Luca pulled Iggy to his feet as they gazed across a snowy terrain. Ok, donc là, en flight depuis la euh, depuis la cabane, ils ont atterri dans un, un endroit enneigé aussi, le même que celui de tout à l'heure. Luca had almost forgotten the walkie-talkie he was carrying. Luca looked at Iggy with hesitation. With a resigned sigh, Luca responded. Luca winced, shoving the walkie-talkie back into his pocket. A disc of smooth metal was lightly covered in snow. Two faint seams were visible along the surface.
Ok, donc il va falloir qu'on... Ah bah tiens, on a de la neige là, on va pouvoir enlever avec la neige. Comme je suis nul au lancer. <rire> voilà. Ok, donc on est à Beacon Pines. Tout va bien. Welcome to Beacon Pines. Ouais, donc ce qu'on disait la dernière fois, c'est que ça ressemblait étrangement à Bacon Pines, parce que c'est Bacon Pines, mais dans la neige. Looking down at the frozen stream, Luca could faintly see a school of minnows encased in the ice. Crunching of footsteps trailing Luca went hush. He looked back to see Iggy's face twisted with confusion. Oh bah non, abandonne pas. Luke appeared upward at the darkening sky. He let out a long, foggy breath. Faintly, Iggy began to cry. Seeing Iggy in such a pathetic state gave Luca a sense of compassion and more than a little guilt. Luca allowed himself to collapse next to Iggy. The boys huddled together for warmth and comfort. If not for exhaustion, their minds would be racing, trying to make sense of the events of the day. As it was, all they had energy for was to sit in silence. Numb. Non, il est trop triste ce moment.
Ouais, donc c'est vraiment un moment euh, où euh, ils sont en pleine euh, enfin, une confession et, euh, et assez intime en plus de ça. Et assez triste du coup. Hein. Je ne sais pas si c'est une bonne idée de s'endormir dans la neige. room no no we both know that's not how this went he grabbed luca's hand and guided the stethoscope to the floor luca heard muffled shouting brought close by the stethoscope it was his parents fighting do you remember what we did next luca gave a slow nod and crept down the hall to peek through the banister he could see the outline of his mother at the bottom of the stairs damn it walt we can't afford to get involved in this She was scared. His father stepped forward. What am I supposed to do? Just watch? There's a sickness in this town, and we both know who's behind it. I swore an oath to help people. I won't turn my back on them. Luca's mother grabbed Walt. She was crying, pleading. I can't lose you. Walt calmly removed Eleanor's hand from his shoulder. What's right is right. Ok, donc ça c'est la dernière fois que Lucas a vu son père. C'est triste. Ah, un nouveau personnage. Since 
or the recognition that he was not in danger, Iggy felt his clenched fists lower. <laughs> Luca looked up, gradually remembering his whereabouts. The figure exhaled a cloud of warm vapor. <laughs> When it came to complete strangers, Icky had trouble cobbling together an insult. He huffed with gratification. <laughs> Nat began to turn away indifferently. sharply and began to stomp off. Realizing he'd worn their patience then, Nat relented. Luca and Iggy turned around with hope in their eyes. Nat took a deep breath in. Nat exhaled slowly, then snapped his fingers. For a brief moment, Luca and Iggy let themselves believe that some great magic was about to unfold, until they opened their eyes and found themselves in the exact same place. <laughs> cold and les yeux, au même endroit. <laughs> Attends, attends, comment ça c'est le vrai Bacon Pint Attends, attends, c'est une réplique Purée, j'ai rien compris. Comment c'est possible là Ok, donc ils ont fait une réplique exacte de Bacon Pies et sans que personne se rende compte, tous les habitants ont été mis dans la réplique de la ville. À cause de la source. Ok. Luca began to laugh uncomfortably. He looked down at his feet. His eyes started back and forth in contemplation. With a sudden pain, a thought struck him. He sprinted off into the pale distance. As Iggy turned to follow, Nat called out.
Ok. Wow, c'est chelou comme histoire. Chapter 6. The Source. Nat expressed his sympathy with a shrug and sauntered off as unassumingly as he'd arrived. He'd given Luca and Iggy what they needed, and nothing more. As Luca sprinted across the snow, the events of the past few days became clearer, pieces to a larger puzzle. Rollo said he was underground somewhere, captured. Mr. Kerr tried to cover it up with lies. The clipboards were hell-bent on capturing Iggy. It all seemed to point to perennial harvest. But right now, there was one thing that Luca needed to know. Luca stopped dead in his tracks. The tree was gone, uprooted and moved, leaving a raw gash in the earth. He dropped to his knees and dug wildly at the cold stone. Ah oui, l'arbre de son papa près de près de la tombe. His numb hands hit something hard, a headstone. A dry whisper escaped Luca's lips. Ah, oh, bah non. There was no reply. Donc en fait, il, tous les ans, il rendait visite à une fausse tombe de son papa. Iggy finally noticed the tears welling in Luca's eyes and the snow-covered grave. Suddenly, they heard the crunch of footsteps in the snow. Ah, puis ils ont volé leur euh, leur arbre à tous Ah ouais, ok. Ah, c'est chaud quand même. down to scoop up a snowball and lobbed it playfully. Back <laughs> comme Michael Jackson presque. <laughs> Luca stuttered through heaving sobs. Iggy gave Luca a solid smack on the back of his head. Blah, blah, blah. Luca wiped his eyes with a sleeve. Iggy flashed a mischievous smile and cracked his knuckles. Ok, donc là, il faut qu'on trouve la source. Bon, c'est déjà où elle est parce qu'on l'a déjà vue auparavant. shared a skeptical look. <laughs> Bless my sentiments.
Iggy darted behind a large pine and began digging furiously. He emerged holding a shoebox with a crude skull painted on its lid. Luca rolled his eyes with realization. Iggy stifled a chuckle. Le chicken euh, flaming chicken chicken cop là c'est parce qu'il lui aura balancé des euh, des feux d'artifice. <rire> Et du coup, il a caché les preuves sous l'arbre. <rire> Iggy triumphantly raised the shoebox. On a obtenu un charme, enfin, crooked. Je pense pas qu'on puisse monter sur le... au café, mais on va quand même regarder. Non. Bon. On va s'attaquer à la source, du coup. inched up to the edge of the hole with bewilderment in their eyes. Arctic air breathed out of the cavern in heaving gusts. Mr. Kerr gazed down the abyss in contemplation. Kerr scratched the back of his head. Même lui sait pas pourquoi. contorted into a saccharine grin.
Fear snapped his fingers. Ah ouais. Ah ouais, ça va être plus compliqué là. Iggy turned to Luca with a sly glance. Iggy waved the box into the air, threatening to drop it down the hole. He plucked a single bottle rocket from the box and held it up with reverence. Ah, là, Monsieur Kerr, il transpire quand même. Hein. <laughs> After a long pause, Mr. Kerr flung up his hand with frustration. Mr. Kerr sighed into the frigid air. With a nonchalant flick, Iggy tossed the firework into the hole. Oh! Oh, la tête! <laughs> With growl, Kerr leapt at Iggy, crashing through Luca. Uh oh Ah non 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 non. Away, but in the struggle, they both tumbled over the side. Luca dove forward, bracing Iggy's hand just before it slipped. His grip was made precarious by the cold, wet snow. He could see Kerr further down, clinging to Iggy's coat. Oh purée sa tête. Vous avez vécu une longue vie, alors pourquoi pas vous suicider <rire> Look in his eye, Mr. Kerr began to hum a proud melody. En train de jouer une mélodie. <rire> C'est pas vrai. Ah bah tiens, on a obtenu un nouveau charme. Luca's hand began to cramp. His voice began to crack. Ah non 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 non, ne demande pas de faire un sacrifice là, s'il te plaît. Every muscle in Luca's body burned. Oh non, c'est trop triste. A calm settled over Iggy's face. Oh no, 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 pas ça. Iggy's voice was colder than the bitter air billowing from the chasm. Ah non, ah non, me demande pas de faire un choix entre euh, entre le laisser mourir et ne pas le laisser mourir. Ah non, pas ça. Non, mais bien sûr qu'on va refuser, euh, on va pas le laisser mourir quand même. He tightened his grip and reached for the walkie-talkie in his pocket. A wild delight crept onto Mr. Kerr's face. That's a good lad. Now, radio for help. Iggy begged Luca with his eyes one last time, but Luca pressed the button and called out. We, we need help. Mr. Kerr is in danger. It wasn't long before they were once again surrounded by clipboards. Mr. Kerr sighed with relieved frustration. There you are. 
You really are a worthless lot, aren't you? Mira, now. A clipboard dutifully produced in ornate Il a demandé un miroir pour se recoiffer, j'y crois pas. Ah, that's better. Mr. Van Horn, I applaud your sharp thinking under duress. I'll put in a good word for you with the founder. Take them away. A swarm of hands overpowered Luca. The last thing he saw before a cloth bag was pulled over his head was the defeated look on Iggy's face. The end. Ça termine comme ça. Non, sérieux. Mm, I think this was one of those times where doing the right thing was the wrong thing. Oh, on n'a pas le choix. C'est pas vrai. Ah, je vais pas aimer cette fin. Je vous le dis, hein, je vais pas aimer cette fin. Purée, non. Luca had no choice but to accept Eggy's request. Oh, non, 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 c'est trop dur, ça. With a quiet blink, Luca watched a teardrop sail down into the howling void. As his fingers slowly gave up, he met eyes with Iggy. Oh non Oh non, c'est trop triste The two silhouettes were swallowed by darkness. Oh no! Ah non, mais elle est trop triste cette fin là. Tempus liquamine, c'est une substance. Ok. Ok, j'ai pas tout compris là. some idea what that would look like. Ah, uh, ouais. Ok, donc il y a une substance au fond de la source, le liquamine, et il faut une certaine quantité d'énergie, et en fait, les feux d'artifice ont été une énergie assez suffisante pour geler la chose, euh, et pas faire... Euh, et pas mettre la ville euh, en congélation, on va dire, comme on l'avait vu auparavant. Mais c'est très temporaire comme, euh, comme solution. With a chuckle, Nat turned and walked west. Dumbfounded, Luca followed behind him, trudging through the snow. Every step taking him further away from everyone and everything he knew, and closer to destiny. To be continued in... Beacon pines, pines harder. Quoi? Revenge served cold. Quoi? Second time's a charm? Wait, that's it? This ends with a crummy cliffhanger just when it was getting good? I was even starting to like Iggy. No way. I refuse to be associated with some never-ending parade of sequels. Let's go back and find something more definitive. Alors, à un moment, il faut qu'on retrouve à nouveau euh, où est-ce qu'on peut utiliser notre charme, du coup. Ah, bah là. Ok, avec la grand-mère, là. Et dans la stillness, il began 
to hum. After the death of his father, Luca had trouble sleeping. Each night, his mother would sit at the foot of his bed and hum a gentle melody. It was the only thing that could calm his mind. The only thing that, however briefly, could make it all seem okay. That melody pervaded every memory Luca had of his mother. Shivering in the raw snow, he began to hum it out loud. Il est en train de fredonner un air en fait. Enfin, fredonner plutôt une mélodie. Gran lowered the torch, listening closely. As recognition slowly set in, her heart sank. Those countless nights of consolation, the incomparable loss they shared together. She let the torch fall to the snow and sizzle out. A few steps toward Luca was all she could bear before dropping to the snow herself. Through a flood of tears, she began to hum along, note for note. Luca lifted his head in astonishment. The last time he heard that melody was the last night he saw his mother. Luca blinked through no way. eyes, trying to see. Ne dis pas que c'est sa mère. He could just make out the impression of a familiar face. He peered across the snowscape at the woman on her knees. Something about her was undeniably his mother. Only smaller, older, changed. Non, c'est sa maman. Oh, j'y crois pas. Luca sprinted as fast as he could toward his mother. They held each other close, and the cold retreated from their bodies. Mais comment c'est possible que ça soit sa mère? Eleanor looked down at Luca, tightening her embrace in an appeal for forgiveness. Joseph slumped into the cold, wet snow. For the first time in a long time, her voice felt like her own again. Luca gazed down at Nancrete with pity. He looked small. Joseph stared into the snow, as if searching it for answers. Donc elle a été exposée, euh, la maman, à la même substance que Rollo. Mais en fait, elle a gardé ça secret parce qu'elle voulait protéger son fils. The devil you know. Seven months ago, Eleanor Van Horn crept down the maze of sterile hallways under perennial harvest. She Donc là, on est revenu sept mois en arrière. Steel door marked deep engineering. No turning back now. She raised a trembling hand. 
The stolen key card worked as promised, and the door bust opened with mechanical efficiency. She was immediately hit with the smell of disinfectant. It was some sort of laboratory. In one corner was a desk covered in papers. Across the room stood a tall metal pod with hoses protruding from its base. She rushed to the desk and began shifting through the piles of papers. They were experiment reports on something called Tempest Liquimen. There were dozens of them. Every one stamped, failed. Eleanor heard the sharp echo of footsteps approaching. She was out of time. Her eyes scanned the room, eventually landing on the strange pod. Muttering a curse under her breath, she dashed over and dove inside. Ok, donc elle est rentrée en douce dans le laboratoire de Pérennial pour trouver euh, une pile de papier où plein d'expériences sur la liquamine ont été faites et qui ont échoué. Et là, on est de retour donc pendant le festival. Avec R qui est en train de faire un super long monologue. Mr. Kerr addressed the crowd with a sarcastic tone. Whispers filtered through the crowd. Il a traité de clown. <rire> ah Qu'est-ce qui se passe alors Torment dragged on Joseph Nuncrete's face. He paused for a moment, plucking a piece of fuzz from his sweater and discarding it to the ground. Attends, mais il se passe quoi là Kerr gave a bow of deference. Gasps rippled through the crowd. Solomon pulled a glass vial from his pocket. In one smooth motion, he downed its contents. A triumphant smile grew across Solomon's lips. Oh, <gasps> no way! began to contort and expand as he disappeared into a belching green mist. C'est le fondateur de la ville. 
Et il a bu quelque chose, euh, un liquide vert là. Il est en train de se transformer. Sharper examined his new hands. Festival Sharper Valentine. Sharper choked out a crude squawk. A frustrated grumble sprinkled through the crowd. Bon, ça nous a permis d'obtenir un autre charme. William Kerr gave a subtle nod to the clipboards. Helpless quiet settled over the crowd. Ben dis donc, il est sévère avec ses enfants là. C'est un acteur, j'ai rien compris. Pourquoi c'est un acteur Sharper addressed the crowd with indignant pride. He'd planned this moment for so long that now, at the deed's fruition, it almost felt frivolous. Il a inventé Monsieur Monsieur Kerr. Monsieur Kerr flourished a preposterously elaborate bow. Oh, Montesquieu. On avait vu son nom dans la librairie. <rire> Ça ne peut plus rien dire, cette histoire. <rire> C'est pire que les feux de l'amour. Ou amour, gloire et beauté. Ou plus belle la vie. Avec plein de suspense.
Sharper coughed up one final laugh and cracked his knuckles. Oh, purée, la fin. Sharper set about remaking the town in his own image. The fertilizer factory soon reopened for business. Sales rose steadily as more and more farmers across the countryside began to swear by its miraculous properties. Beacon Pines became famous, a secretive town that, for the right price, shared its gifts with all. Gifts that became more and more necessary in a world where winters grew longer and longer. The end. Ok, alors Beacon Pines est redevenu célèbre à cause de son fertilisant. Things are, you can feel it, right? We can't let Sharper win. He might just be the key to this whole thing. Let's see. Du coup, on va choisir un autre charme. Alors, qu'est-ce qu'il nous reste Non, on n'a plus que ça. Pour qu'on soit malicieux, alors. There was a malice lurking behind those eyes. Like a trap ready to spring. Luca felt the weight of Nuncrete's hand on his shoulder. Something wasn't right. He didn't know why, but something was telling Luca to get out of there. Luca twisted free of Nuncrete's grasp. Cours, petit, cours. <rire> juste checker. Ah bah ben non. Oui, on va juste checker. <rire> si on trouve quelque chose. The two scurried off, eagerly formulating a plan. Bongo
Et on va voir si on peut pêcher quelque chose, mais je crois qu'on a un élément en plus, donc... Euh... Ah, on a croqué. Luca tied a bent nail onto the line. If all you have is a hammer. Qu'est-ce qu'on va ramener? Ok, une photo. Je pense que du coup, on va pouvoir aller à la cabane. He aired a long holler into the woods. Luca felt his eyes getting heavy and plopped into the beanbag. He conceded to its lumpy embrace. Once again, ah, on va refaire un autre Luca found himself in a vast black expanse. This time, he knew exactly where to go. He took a single confident step forward. The world flickered and pulsed. He found himself standing in front of the frigid air of a blazing campfire. The source. He plopped down cross-legged and gazed into the cold flame, waiting. Soon enough, the fire began to die out, popping sporadically, until all that was left was a single ember. Luca stood up and dusted himself off. He plucked the glowing ember from the cold ash, examined it, and slid it into his pocket. A keepsake. The voice of his father spoke behind him. You made me proud, Buckaroo. Luca turned to face him. Dad, what is this place? A warm grin grew across his father's face. A place where everything that has been and everything that could be all wait together. Luca found himself staring at his father's face, trying as hard as he could to memorize every single detail. Wait? For what? Another voice spoke out as Luca's doppelganger stepped forward. That's up to you. Without knowing why, Luca began to weep. Is... is any of this real? Are you real? Luca's father bent down to smudge away a tear. Of course, I'm as real as the part of you that misses me. Luca turned to look at the older version of himself. And you? The doppelganger choked back tears. I'm as real as the part of you that's angry he's gone. Does that make sense? Through his tears, Luca laughed. <laughs> I think so. His father pulled him in for an embrace. Time to go, buckaroo. Luca was startled from his dream by a banging on the floor. A commanding voice rumbled from below. Just as Luca sprang to lock the entry hatch, the door knocked open. Oh là, qui c'est qui rentre là? Chapter 5 Dangers big and small. Luca stumbled back. He heard the rope ladder creak under significant weight. Keeping his eyes fixed on the hatch, he inched backward to the balcony. As his hand grasped the door handle, Luca froze. 
A large figure clumsily wriggled up through the hole. The large figure cocked its head inquisitively. Je m'y ferai jamais, hein, tous ces poils et euh, ces avant-bras musclés. Euh. Flaming chicken cup. <rire> He peered more closely at the man standing in front of him. Something about him was undeniably Rollo, only bigger, older, changed. Rollo proudly presented his hands to Luca. Pourquoi t'es si petit, toi? Il pointed Rollo to his reflection in the balcony window. His What the? <laughs> Holy Toledo. Il est content. Rollo shadow boxed a few jabs. With a yelp, Rollo dove behind Luca. She shot a nervous glance at Rollo. Beck's eyes narrowed. Donc elle essaie de se repeindre sa petite mèche vieillissante là. tried to put on a smile. Thank <laughs> you. 
She sighed, and after a moment, looked down at Beck sympathetically. She flashed a sly grin and tussled Beck's hair. Ils vont la tuer Non. Luca gave Rollo a quick elbow to the ribs. flicked a large sheet of paper out of her pocket and slammed it on the floor. Rollo started to wiggle with excitement. Il est pour tout. <laughs> the heist. They spent the night's end huddled around that small map, formulating a plan to infiltrate the headquarters of Perennial Harvest. It would be no small feat, a modern facility equipped with all manner of technology, not to mention the swarm of clipboards that would most certainly be scattered throughout. By the time the sun began to peek through the car window used as a makeshift balcony door, Oh, this could just work. The final day before the festival would be used to prepare. 
They'd need to pool every resource at their disposal, pull every favor with a thread. Even enlist some unsavory characters around town with important tasks only they were suited for. Luckily, there was enough ill will and mistrust toward Perennial Harvest that alliances could be found at a bargain. Luca, Beck, and Rollo rubbed their eyes as they exited the treehouse. They hadn't slept at all that night. The festival was to begin in one day, and they each had their assignments. He waved vaguely at Rollo's sizable figure. <rire> Comment tu vas expliquer à ta grande sœur que tu es presque aussi grande qu'elle They each looked at each other with sleepy confidence and Ok. Ok, on a deux missions donc. Luca looked up at the satellite dish. Donc là, faut pas. On n'avait pas visité le, le, la terrasse dehors et ça nous a permis en plus de ça d'avoir un, un charme. It did at least boost the signal enough to overhear truckers one town over. On est bien là. On va pouvoir mener à bien notre mission. Nos deux missions plutôt. On va juste voir si notre charme que nous avons récupéré va nous permettre de pêcher. Ah bah ouais. Cool. Parfait. Luca tied a small magnet to the line. Fishing with the law of attraction. Voilà ce qu'on va récupérer. Qu'est-ce que c'est ça? Ah, c'est une clé Luca wrapped some tape around the hook. Hey, you never know. Voici donc un résumé des jetons qui vous serviront pour obtenir le succès Agile Angler ainsi que l'endroit où il se trouve. Donc on a enfin obtenu notre succès pour la pêche et on est super méga content Enfin on a tout pêché sauf des poissons. Magnifique. Ah, elle l'est toujours, elle c'est pas vrai. Elle est collée à son banc, elle c'est pas possible. Il fait un 
petit tour d'exploration avant de faire la suite. Ah, il est là, j'ai... Jeff wheezed out a long snicker. The joy in Jeff's face drained instantly. Looking into the sullen eyes of his would-be accomplice, Luca blurted out the first word that came to mind. Mm -hmm. bon, on va choisir I, là. Euh... Je le premier. Sensing some traction, Luca carried on with vigor. Jeff's scowl faded with a sigh. One good stomp of the foot was all Jeff needed to drive his point home. Luca offered out his open hand to seal the deal. With a firm and dusty grip, Jeff reciprocated. Ok, donc ça c'est bon. On a obtenu l'aide de, de Geoff ou Goff ou Joff, je ne sais pas comment il le prononce. On va juste regarder la bibliothèque, mais ça m'étonnerait qu'on ait encore quelque chose de nouveau. Enfin, la bibliothèque, la librairie plutôt. Et maintenant, il faut qu'on parte à la recherche d'Izzy. Ah, bah, ils sont juste là. C'est super! an eyebrow suspiciously. Mm -hmm. Iggy gave a reluctant shrug. Ok, donc là, pareil, c'est un choix multiple. On va essayer Strange. Et après, on va mettre... Euh... Je sais pas, on va mettre... Euh... On va mettre Break Parce que lui, il adore casser des choses. Iggy <rire> glanced over to Tish. Who nodded in agreement. With a quick nod, Luca was off. Ok, donc ça c'est bon, on a demandé l'aide des deux. Iggy gazed up at Tish with a smile. A single tear ran down Tish's cheek. Chapter 7 sur ce, je vous laisse. N'hésitez pas à vous abonner à ma chaîne YouTube ou à me rejoindre sur mon Twitch. On se retrouve pour la suite. D'ici là, portez-vous bien. À la prochaine. Ciao.